Bow your heads and close your eyes. Thank you, Jesus, for having that. I love you because you are, you make all of us safe. And thank you for my family and my friends. I'm so thankful for all the people that are here. And I'm sorry for when I um, help help me to be kind to all the people that I don't know yet, but will know. Please help me tomorrow as I go through my brother's birthday and keep me safe as I go through that I go through, go to my home safely. And I want to praise you because you, you guide me along all the right paths. In Jesus' name, amen. Gentleness is one of the fruit of the Spirit. And we know that as he come forth, he always have a joke. And my brother in Christ, we just present Reverend June Makabali. Life. 
Now, please turn your Bible to Habakkuk 3, chapter 3, verse 16 to 19. And I'll be reading from the New International Version. Okay, 3.16 says, I heard and my heart pounded, my lips quivered at the sound. They can creep into my bones and my legs tremble. Yet I will wait patiently for the day of calamity to come on the nation invading us. Though the fig tree does not bud and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen, no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. The Sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to go on the heights for the director of music on my string instrument. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Praise your holy name, O Lord. Lord, without you, our lives will weigh down my peers and brokenness because of many asserting this. So we want to celebrate because we have a God who is so faithful, who is so loving and caring. The Jehovah Shama, the God who is always there for us. Lord, we especially appreciate your blessing for continually sustaining us and bringing us to celebrate your goodness towards us. Again, may our, may our words be our words and our thoughts today show that we recognize you as the source of every good things. Again, Lord, may your anointing fall upon your servant. And as always, Lord, may your name be lifted up and glorified. This we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. <clears throat> My brothers and sisters, I firmly believe that we don't have to depend on circumstances for joy for we can trust on God's salvation and truly we can have joy in uncertainty. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And with all the things that are happening in the world today, it is always easier to move in fear and panic. Throughout history, people of faith have overcome challenges because life is not what happens but how we take it. The question is, how do we respond to the challenges that we are facing right now? First, we should entreat faith. And in Timothy, 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power, yes. and love, and self-control. Yes. And even in Romans 1.17, it says, The righteous shall live by faith. And also Philippians 4, 6, it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. My brothers and sisters, we trust that God is sovereign, isn't it? And in control over every single challenges in the world and even in our lives. You see, we trust His loving will and purpose. And we should constantly pray and worship that He will turn things around. Yes, my brothers and sisters, let us keep praying and speak light. Never, never lose hope. Don't let panic or fear overcome us. And above all, let us see perfect love cast out fear. Because in Matthew 10, 28, it says, Jesus was telling His disciples, not to be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Hallelujah, isn't it? Isn't it wonderful to know that our most feared enemy does not have final control over us? We may not be facing death today, but we face fears that feel like death. And yes, a thousand small deaths attack our soul. But brothers and sisters, let us continue to be obedient to His love. Let us trust God that He will bring us good things. Yes. More than any 
anything we need. Faith to see blessings instead of fears. Right. Isn't it? So how to have joy in uncertainty? In three faith. And secondly, my brothers and sisters, exercise wisdom. As my, our sister, our reverend, just told us about this a while ago. My children 16 says, Be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Truly, my brothers and sisters, blessed is the one who finds wisdom and the one who gets understanding. Someone said, wisdom is knowing what to do next. Skills is knowing how to do it. And virtue is doing it. As we are called to exercise discernment and wisdom, my brothers and sisters, let us be more responsible. And I think this not too much to share with you the simple things that displace wisdom. Let me tell you, let us learn how to properly wash our hands. We have to do that. Let us exercise good hygiene and cup etiquette as never in time that cupping has become more suspicious about someone's health, isn't it? And please don't share fake news. A wise man said, my brothers and sisters, it is better to remain silent at the risk of being taught a fool than to talk than remove all that of him. <laughs> you know, in 1 Timothy 4, 8 says, For while bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way, as it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. Right. Yes, my brothers and sisters, wisdom, what all should be desiring for more than anything, not avoiding more challenges, but wish for more wisdom. Amen? Amen. You know, nothing shapes our life more than the challenges with the commitments we choose to make. They can develop us or destroy us, my brothers and sisters. But either way, they define us. You know, what I've learned in life is sometimes doing good and doing right are not the same. That's why we need wisdom in this area, isn't it? You know, the best thing to do is what God says we should. And I tell you, my brothers and sisters, when our actions align with His will, then we can always expect good results. Amen. Amen. You know, some people are worry junkies. Oh, they love worrying. Sometimes they worry why they are no longer worrying, you know. You know? Yet Jesus said we should not worry, isn't it? Because the day has enough trouble of its own. Let us get enough sleep, my brothers and sisters. Let us rest well. Pray for his peace and let us and let us ask for wisdom to do the right things. Amen? Amen. Amen. So the question is how to have joy in uncertainty? First is to enter with faith. Secondly, exercise wisdom. And third, let us establish contentment. You know, when a glass of water is already half, a pessimist will say it's half empty. Right. While the optimist will say it's half full. <laughs> In fact, even when there is no coronavirus, my brothers and sisters, we can still find reasons to complain about. If we are just a complainer, we can proclaim practically about everything about our country, our home, our church. We can complain even uh, our pastor. <laughs> the, world, the world has more than enough problems of its own. Let's not add up our demands and complaints. We should be part of the solution and not be a burden. This all right, all right, stay, sir. Habakkuk 3.18 says, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. 
I will be joyful in God, my Savior. You know, if there is any person ever had a right to be joyful, to be contented, it is us. It is the believer in Christ because we have a loving Savior, you know. You know, heaven and eternity awaits on us. And even as we experience day by day, moment by moment, you know, the grace of God, we will have every reason to be smiling, isn't it? Yes. Gratitude and having contentment unlocks the fullness of life. What if we turn what we have into enough and more or turn denial into acceptance? Chaos to order, confusion to charity. Yes, turns a meal into a feast, a house into a home, yes. because gratitude makes sense of your past, brings peace for today, and creates a vision for tomorrow. And you know what? We will see ourselves how gratitude leads to contentment, which is the true measure of happiness. Amen? Amen. That's why, may I have your attention, please, for this is very important. You know, brothers and sisters, I believe that the real contentment of the heart is shown during times of prosperity. Because when we are poor, we are humble. Yes. And when we prosper, we will become different. This is why we need to prepare our hearts even before we prosper. Amen. You know, my brothers and sisters, if the heart is right, even when things go wrong, they will turn out right. Yes. But if the heart is wrong, even the good things done will become wrong. Amen. And you know, my favorite speaker said this, people often succeed because they plan in what they are doing, but they are always serious with their responsibilities. That's why my brothers and sisters, go through life like a child, always full of curiosity, humility, simplicity and contentment. I say never lose your sense of wonder. Yes. And here's food for thoughts, my brothers and sisters. No matter how beautiful and handsome you are, just remember the baboons and gorillas also attract tourists. So stop posting, my brothers and sisters. No matter how big and strong you are, will not carry yourself to great. That's why we humble, my brothers and sisters. No matter how tall you are, you can never see tomorrow. Be patient. No matter how rich and many cars you have, you will always walk to bed. Be contented. First Timothy 6, 6 to 8 says, But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into the world, and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. You. you know, my brothers and sisters, our job is to live a life that glorifies God. Yes. And everything beyond that is a blessing. That's why let us establish contentment, isn't it? You know, let us be an optimist. It does not only feel good, it does not only make us move. Uh, Mary, but it also keeps people young, you know. Yes, my brothers and sisters, there can be joy in a certain thing. If, if we only enter in faith, if we only exercise wisdom, if we only establish contentment, and furthermore, the fourth point, enforce kindness. In Ephesians 4, 31 to 32, it says, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. 
Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. You know what is happening now? The coronavirus should not be an excuse to hate another person, generation or race. You know, we can be both wise and discerning and kind and caring. Let us be generous in prayers and encouragement, my brothers and sisters. Okay, let us define kindness. What is kindness? Kindness is an inner desire that makes us do good things to others. Even we don't give anything in return. It is always done with sincerity and done from the heart. You become worthy not just for who you are not even for what you have but of what others have become because of you yes. isn't it Thank you. oh the blessing that comes when we enforce kindness isn't it you know when we are worried and feeling overwhelmed it gives us peace yes. when we feel like complaining it creates gratitude yes. when we are facing difficult choices it grant us wisdom. When we have problems, it provides patience. You know, the kindness that brings grace and healing, especially in these times of challenges, the kindness that strengthens our faith, that when the world seems to spiral control, give us the assurance that God is still in control. Amen. I have shared this song so many times. Time to be happy is now. The place to be happy is here. And the way to be happy is to make others happy and to bring the little heaven down here. And lastly, I want to share with you this verse. 1 John 4, 7 to 8. It says, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is God. And everyone that love is born of God and knows God. You know, whatever our dealings and relationship, it should be reflected with God's love. We shouldn't act like someone who has never known love or God's healing power but instead let us fill our life with God reaching out love let us enter in faith let us exercise wisdom let us establish contentment let us enforce kindness you know, my brothers and sisters, this is a sure way to find joy in a certainty. If there is anyone in our midst that faces uncertainty, yes, my brothers and sisters, uncertainty is a difficult thing to, to bear. But I want to encourage you not to bear all this burden of uncertainties. You can come to God and cast all your burdens on Him. Yes. You know, for our future, our provisions, our ultimate triumph, triumph our joy, and above all, our salvation are certain to God. That's why we approach the altar that our minister can pray for you. Hallelujah. Let us stand. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ.
was his son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ, His Son. And now, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. And now, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. With a grateful heart, give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ, His Son, and now, and now. I am strong, let the poor say, I am rich, because of what the Lord has done for us. And now, for the last time, and now, let the weak say, I I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. We give thanks. Let us pray. Hallelujah. We praise your Holy Name, O Lord. Yes. Truly, O Lord God, you are our joy. Yes. You are our strength. Yes. Heavenly Father, at times joy seems to slip out of our worship. Yes. For God, you tell us to be glad, yes. to rejoice before you, to exceedingly rejoice. Yes. Lord, even when life is miserable, and so much uncertainties, especially at present, O Lord God, facing this coronavirus. O Lord God, we can run to you, and we will find refuge and strength. O Lord, keep us a merry heart, that we can experience healing and deliverance. Lord, thank you. Thank you, God, for lifting our hearts. When we think of your salvation, you are our protector. You are our deliverer. Lord, we give you love. We give you glory and honor. Lord God, again, I ask, pour out your blessing upon your people. Lord God, heal every one of us, O Lord. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, our, uh, we will take our benevolence if you have the time just pass it there at the, at the door and thank you so much for being with us today.